plated it, stapled it, riveted it. Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today I'm back in the Great Keep in Dover Castle. So thank you English Heritage, thank you Dover for letting me do this. But 14 years ago, something amazing happened to this building and I had the enormous privilege to be part of that. Now this building was 850 years old and a really good condition castle, you know, no doubt about that. But it doesn't really give a tourist, a, a viewer, a good idea of what the place might have been like when it was built. And so the idea of the project was to renovate some of the rooms, turn some of the rooms into how they may have looked when this castle was built in 1180. So what was amazing about this project was how correct, authentic, accurate people wanted things to be. They didn't want a Hollywood version. They didn't want a, an MDF and plastic version. They wanted a real version. And so what that meant was they came to craftspeople like myself and a whole raft of other craftspeople as well to make real objects. But why that's courageous is a real object, a real lantern or a knife or a sword, it's not meant for public display. And even more courageous than that, the display, will, you're allowed to touch stuff. People can sit in the throne. So absolute credit has to go to, well, the organisations who drove it, Dover Castle and English Heritage, but then the individuals that I dealt with as well. I'm sure there are many others, but Paul Patterson, Stephen Brindle, Rowena Willard-Wright, Joe Gray, they did an incredible job to make it right and to be courageous enough to deliver things that people thought were frankly crazy, like white leather doors. And here we are at the white leather doors. And this just sums up the courage that was involved in doing Dover, really was. So you have beautiful, beautiful blacksmith work here on all of the panels and the hinges and the framing. And then you've got white calfskin leather in a tourist attraction, in a castle, in salty air, combined with metal work. I mean, people probably thought, I would imagine the word lunatic was used, and yet they've survived. And what a fabulous thing. Look at them. Look at them. They are just amazing. So let's find ourselves a different room and we'll go and look at some of the things I made. And what better place for me to start than the armory? So I made them a whole load of shields here, both kite shields and flat topped ones, swords, uh, male hauberk, um, lances, some repair equipment, a little sort of forgy area at the other end. And the thing is, you can touch it. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can look at it, you can wonder how heavy is a kite shield? I don't know, how heavy is a kite shield? Oh look, it's that heavy. You've got harnessing on the back, you can see how it fits, how it works. All of this was part of the driver behind the project to make it real. And the thing is they didn't want something that looked like a kite shield because that means nothing. What they want is a real kite shield because that tells a real story. And so everything within the museum has been done like that, within the, the Great Keep. And for me, it's just a, a privilege to be part of a, an organisation that drove that. So I'll show you a few other little bits and pieces where you might not even notice the detail that's been put into it, but it's there. Now, what I love about the whole concept behind the Great Keep was that you should be able to touch as much as possible, not everything, but a lot of the items within this place. You can go up to them, you can feel them. And these swords are part of that. So they're real swords, you know, because that's the idea. They should be real. So they've been blunted very slightly so they can't cut you, but nonetheless, the blades are functional blades. You can put your hands on the handle. You can feel what they're like. You can understand about them. And what we really wanted was that you'd be able to lift them as well and feel the weight. But actually, that turned out to be a step too far because with a little bit of effort, you're able to wiggle them out of this rack, which, of course, you know, simply isn't going to do. So, you know, day one, whopping big industrial fixing straight through the middle of the blade, and that solves that problem. But there's so much about this armoury that I like. But what we'll do is, I'm just going to show you one last thing before we leave, because, again, it's one of those things for me that just sums up what's right. This is just part of the display of an armourer's repair workshop, really, just a little bit tucked away at the end. But it's things like this stump anvil that I really love. We could have just cheated and put a modern anvil in, and 99.9% .9 of people would never know. But that's not really what they used at the time. So we've got a whopping big chunk of steel here in a log, wedged in with wedges. Perfect. I'm down in the kitchens and I've put a whopping big light on here. Usually it's pretty gloomy down here. But you can still see that there's detail on these things because as a viewer, it matters. You know, it, it, it tells another story and that just helps bring the thing alive. So we've made repairs and mends. We've made them look different. We've made them alive. And that was a really important thing. This whole idea of the objects within the museum, within the Great Tower, having lived a life, you can see it everywhere. So this malt shovel, 10 years ago, it was perfect. It was lovely. And then it got broken and some chunks got taken out. 
and then some more chunks got taken out. So I plated it. Plated it, stapled it, riveted it. It's absolutely typical medieval mending. That's exactly the sort of thing you'd see. Now, we could have just thrown it away and, and made a new one. But actually, why not mend it? Give it more life, give it more story. So that's what we do. I'm in the King's Garderobe now with two more items that I've made. So a gold leaf saddle, absolutely beautiful, that's fine. But then we have a Holbuck here. Now, this castle has its own little weird microclimates everywhere. And this place makes this rust like crazy. And that was causing a problem in an unexpected way. Because, of course, it rusts and we can clean it and we can wax it, that's fine. But people come and touch it. We want them to touch it. But people come and touch it, feel it, and then they end up getting a bit of, well, people's acid from their fingers causes it to rust, the salt causes it to rust, and they get dirt on them. So then they look for something to clean their hands. And the nearest thing, would you believe it, white tablecloth behind you. People do it. And so we've had to move to stainless steel to try and save that. We do it with reticence, but sometimes it's necessary. I'm standing at the foot of the king's bed here, and this magnificent chest has got the king's sword on it. Now, maker's marks were not particularly common at the time, but people would still sign their work. So engraved on the blade is Gilbertus me fecit. Gilbert made me. Now, it's little details like that. As a viewer who comes here, you won't know, most people won't know if things were marked or not marked, but it just helps with the whole image of everything. And of course, like everything else, you can touch it, you can feel it. But because of that, it needs to be fixed down. So on the back of the blade, we've got brazed fittings and the whole thing is bolted through onto the lid of the box. Same with the scabbard here. There's actually a core in it, which then is bolted through onto the box. So again, you can touch the scabbard, you can feel it, but you can't remove it. I'm going to sign off here, and what an amazingly beautiful setting to have. So this is behind the King's dining table. And again, it just shows really what the whole thinking behind the project was. This could have just been a print. It's not. It's an embroidery, because it needed to be right, even if the visitors don't know it, because they can't actually touch this bit. The cushions on, on the King's chair here again, done by an organisation called Fine Cell. They're prisoners who do that embroidery, and it is beautiful, and it is right. And that is what this project is all about. And I was thrilled to be a part of it. But Channel 4 did a great hour and a half documentary when the whole place opened. Lots of interviews with the people involved. Go and check it out. I'll put a link in the notes. But thank you very much. Thank you, English Heritage. Thank you, Dover. And thank you for getting me involved. Because 13 years later, I am still thrilled by it every time I come in here. Anyway, thank you very much.